Hi everyone. We seem to look forward to those bank holidays with anticipation. Hopefully get some crack and sailing in. And in reality, when they turn up, they never give us the best of weather. Well, sometimes they do. But on this particular occasion, it was quite flat. There wasn't much wind at all. Although it had promised a little, that never showed up. So it ended up being a little bit of a motor just round the north side of Anglesey so we could pick an anchorage up for the night and hopefully I get a decent sail back the next morning. Well as it turned out on the day there was two other boats going not that other one or that one they weren't going the other two boats were two sailing boats Jamelia and the Aegol. We all had small futile attempts at sailing but didn't get anywhere and decided that there was wind but not enough to actually do anything to make sail shape or sails work and we couldn't beat whatever little currents were knocking round so we just motored it but then there was plenty of other boat, boats out there making the same decisions just motor it just get to somewhere for the night and enjoy well the afternoon and enjoy the afternoon during a couple of hours of motoring though i always find there's plenty to do if i'm not playing with the cameras i find bits and pieces that need tidying and need doing on the boat and also keeping myself in tea and food as well takes up my time and plotting the weather or hopefully working out what it's going to do well just as we were getting to our destination which was Porth Wen um, commonly known as the Brickworks or locally known as the Brickworks a couple of boats had been feeling a bit of a breeze and there's a little bit of wind and Aslan starting to make use of it but then we're here and we've arrived and we're on our way in as you enter into Porth Wen it, um, it faces north more or less so you're heading south as you're going in and when you look to your port there's quite a few growly rocks and quite and ahead of here as well which is the south of the bay there's a few crowley rocks too we're looking to end up on the west of the bay that's the brickworks ahead of us and this is what it looks like on the chart you can actually anchor quite close to the brickworks as long as you work your depths out okay for the tides I've just had to redo this video you might have seen the first version of it where the radio was actually playing. Well, the song that was on the radio messed up all the royalty rights to the video. So I've had to reshoot this little piece again. I'm just taking the radio sound off, that's all. So this is a take two of a take one. This is the local taxi service, courtesy of Jamila. Very little wind, which is going to make it quite nice. So next thing I do is take a couple of fixes of a couple of solid objects on the land. That being one of them. And an house over there being another one. I don't think they're going to move at all during the night. A quick 360. That's to the north in the Isle of Man in Scotland. And that's Jamila over there. Uh, on an anchor. With running the taxi service, which will take me from um, here over to Nigel's boat over there, which is the Aegolt, where I'll have a few drinks later and get a nice picture of my boat. And if you look up his mast, it's by a wall on the land up there, so I'll use that as a quick reference guide to make sure I'm not dragging, should I ever think I need to know. But I've got that chimney there written down now anyway. So it's nice to have a quick reference point and that's the beach which is a bit pebbly and I don't think there's any roads come down here or well, not that I can say and not that I know of so most of the people who are going to come down here to visit from the land they're going to be walking this way it's quite growly over there and I don't like it when the tide goes down I see a lot of little spiky ones so I stay well clear of there there's good mud where I am near at the moment but you will find an odd rock as well and over the other side which is the east side of the bay which is over there I don't like that either there's a few growly rocks over there not nice I take the opportunity while I'm visiting Diego to get myself a snap of uh, swallow looking very pretty at anchor there later on that day it started raining never stopped and it rained all night and all morning till about ooh, 10 o'clock 
a boat come in as it was stopping raining, but it was a little bit breezy at the time, and he seemed to be quite close to where I dropped my hook, and he was getting ready to drop his own. I say getting ready, and there it is, it's going down, so he's dropping his hook, and it looks like it's almost on top of mine, so hope he doesn't drag too far back. His mainsail there is the reason he's probably dropped it quick, because it's catching the wind, and he wants to get it away, but it looks like he's going to come alongside me in a second or two. Well, I think he thinks it's a little bit close for comfort because he hauls the hook up without sorting the mainsail out and then disappears a little bit further away from me. But he seemed to go to the area that I wouldn't normally anchor in and he obviously knows the area a lot better than me. As we all know, rocks don't tend to move very much, so those rocks that are over there will hopefully stay over there and hopefully there's nothing anywhere near them at all. But I don't know how long he's staying and he probably knows what he's doing. And me, I'm getting ready to weigh anchor, but I've got this bit where the rope and the anchor come together and it never seems to go round the capstan very well. It always seems to slip off. Don't have that much luck getting this bit. I should normally get used to handballing the first little bit in until the chain's done. But I'm trying here to see if it'll go round the capstan, both rope and chain together. But as you can see, not very successful. You can also see by the lead ankle of the anchor chain and those couple of loose lines there that are flicking round by the side of my head that there's a bit of a breeze in front of us as well and that always makes getting the anchor in a little bit difficult when it's quite tight. So the first thing I've got to do is get my snubber off. Right, I know what you're asking yourselves. Why have I spent my time motoring all the way here to have a rainy night and a breezy morning? Well, that breezy morning is going to supply me with a reach, hopefully, all the way home. That's the plan anyway. It's, it's one o'clock-ish now and I'm going to kick off, obviously, because I'm weighing the anchor. And as you can see, I'm here at the moment and this is what the wind's like. Well, it says two o'clock. The wind should actually increase in the lighter areas as the day goes on and um, give me a good reach all the way home this way. Fingers crossed the direction doesn't change at all. Well, anchor away and I'm drifting out of the uh, moorings quite quickly there, or the anchorage, due to the fact that there's an offshore wind. There's plenty of her as well. I've got about 17 knots up the chuff and I'm making about 4 knots, so that's about a 20 knot wind, which is quite decent. I've only got the foresail out at the moment because I'm making 4 knots over the ground into the last of the ebb. But it is a neap. One last look back of the other boat, still in the anchorage. And the middle mouse behind me, and I'm away. The bit of land sticking out ahead of me down there is Linus Lighthouse, and you can just about make out that dark patch there, which will be East Mouse. Swallow feels like she thinks she's on a passage. She doesn't realise she's going home. She's starting to get into her stride a little bit and she feels like she's starting to push water. I think I may have to get the mainsail out. I like the way a neat keeps the sea nice and flat myself. Oh, and it definitely helps when you've got the breeze coming off the land. Keeps it flat as well. Everything in our favour. Four and a half knots over the ground. And we're still pushing tide, don't forget. Not a lot of it because it's a neat, but we're still pushing a little bit. And it's even threatening to get towards five knots over the ground. It's getting sunny. What can I say? Got to put the sunglasses on. Make out it's a proper bank holiday. You have. Look carefully and you can see Jamila and Diego following. That's an empty Porth Elian anchorage there, surprising on a bank holiday. I've put a reefed mainsail out because I seem to be making a fair pace through the water and I know there's more wind out there because we were having 20 knots when we were in the morning. Five knots over the ground suit me fine. 
and there you go there's gusts of 18 pushing me up to six knots and we're just about coming up to slack water that's actually quite quick for me um, for well reefed sails in 18 knots of wind i seem to be uh, reaching very efficiently but i think everybody does If I've said this once, I've said it a thousand times, the wind's fickle off the land, the wind's up and down, and the, the speed over the ground's up and down, but I'm in a few eddies of current around the end of Linus anyway, like you'd expect, but it continuously is changing, the speed through the, over the ground, speed through the water, and the air coming across at me. She's definitely settling down to find herself a nice groove anyway and starting to churn up the water a little bit more. As long as our 20-ish knots keep themselves blowing, we're going to have a crack and sail back. Well, as we round Linus, that means that our heading now is a fixed heading all the way back, so the wind best stay in the same direction. I'm sure this little bit of video would suit a nice back and track, but I'm scared to use music. Anyway, summer's hopefully coming. It shouldn't be too far now. I know the year's ticking along, but it has to happen. I'm sure it has to happen. And we haven't had much of it as yet. So this is just going to lead me into the thoughts of it, where we can take the bug this year and where we're actually going to get ourselves to. When Swallow gets herself into this kind of a groove, you've just got that sensation that she won't stop for nothing. She will go absolutely anywhere. But unfortunately, ahead of us, 15 miles ahead of us, you can see mountains in the distance. And they will definitely stop us when we get there. So I think that might be the end of this reach. So we need the wind to carry on in the same direction. The tides can do whatever they like because there's not a lot of them. And we'll just munch along. I could just watch this all day. I could just leave this clip room for me and I could stare at it for hours. The wind keeps changing its mind to what it wants to blow. So the boat stands up and then she heals a little bit and then she stands a bit and then she heals a little bit. But nothing too much. She's got quite a happy balance about her. Blowing a little bit out there. Um, 24 knots we're pushing into now we're making a constant five knots into it though so i'm quite happy we're not really close all 60 degrees but uh, we're doing over five knots so it's really good boat's healed about 17 degrees and she's quite comfortable so she's comfy i'm comfy but it keeps veering a little bit and backing a little bit and the gusts change in strength but that's because it's coming off the hills as usual it was coming the other way around a bit a lot colder though so that's happy that it's a southwesterly. Yeah. Okay, catch you later.
still running reefed sails and still going really well. Feels like we're just consuming the sea in front of us, like a vacuum cleaner over a carpet. And the sea, all it gets to see is Swallow coming along, munching away. She's not got the finest bows in the world, and I suppose she bashes the water out of the way rather than cutting through it like a sportier boat would. But that swallows way, I'm afraid. I think Swallow's having far too much fun today. She's loving this, she's screaming down the coast, she's absolutely loving it. She says she's dead happy doing five and a half knots, not quite into the wind now. We're at about 70 degrees at the moment, so it's more of a reach. Well, it is a reach. But still, it's a happy five and a half knots over, over five and a half knots. We're going to have a little bit of current with us soon as well, as the flood will start. Well, I suppose the flood's actually started, so probably got up to, maybe up to a knot. So maybe I'm not doing five and a half knots, but she feels like it. She's loving it anyway. This is how unstable my speed seems. It's just popping up and down. It won't stick up one speed at all. It changes every second. Do you like this little idea? There's my cooker and there it is as it heals. I put this little piece of wood on there to make my cup of tea. And that way it's always flat when I'm pouring the water and always flat when I'm pouring the milk. And the tea never spills. Even with that heel there, about 17 degrees, my tea's flat in its cup. If you look sharpish there, you can just see Jamila in the distance. You could say, screaming down the east coast of Anglesey. That you could say. They're the same two ships we passed on the way. Well, we seem to be blessed with this constant breeze. Water remains flat and it's got a little bit of sun on it or at least a little bit of light on it because there is blue skies up there above the grey skies but they are starting to peek through a little bit Every time I look at the wind it's gone up or down 5 knots and the speed does exactly the same Well I don't mean it goes up or down 5 knots because that would be amazing but it does go up or down a little bit and this is the first time today I've seen six knots pop up. Meanwhile, at the stern, Swallow just slips quietly through the water. They couldn't be further from each other, could they? Still blessed with slight seas, no rain, fair winds, and the sun almost creeping through. What a day! I don't think I've seen the water ripping past so quickly on the leeward side for such a long time. I forgot what a good reach was like. Well, that's screaming by in my eyes. A racing boat about now, especially when I look back there at the quarter, would almost be trying to jump onto a plane and get really going. And well, Swallow's Hull will never let a plane, but at least she gets close to the sensation of trying to climb out of a hole. And you can see just how happy that makes me. That's a proper smile. 
I think it's time to put another brew on. I'm not sure my speed varies this much all the time. I mean, it jumps almost from 5 knots to 6.8 knots. Can't be true. The wind's starting to ease off a little bit, so speed might start to ease off a little bit. So I've let a little bit more sail out and we're maintaining the same sort of speeds. So let's hope that that keeps up. Well, with the easing wind, Puffin Island on the nose, a bit more blue skies coming out, a bit more sunshine. The day's starting to feel a bit warmer now as well. It's starting to look like I might let the last bit of sail out after all. It's not all bad though. We've got five degrees of heel more or less. We've got very little wind now. The wind's gone down to less than 15 knots. Uh, 14 something knots, 14 knots. But we're still making five, seven over the ground but we definitely got a bit of tide with us now and we mustn't forget about that it's a lift for sure as i'm closing up on the end of puffin island there the water's starting to get a bit of blueness to it now the gray out of the sky is starting to disappear it's the end of the day but it's been the end of a really splendid day and uh, to my port side on my poor quarter i've noticed there's a a quite a quick moving um, boat catching up with me but I'm not sure who it is and I'm not dead in the water either I'm still making a fair plonk along and the winds actually picked back up again which has lifted me again there you go back to where it was earlier on well there we are coming up to the end of Puffin the rock sticks out a little bit on the east end of Puffin so I've got to give it a bit of a wide berth Still got my reefs and my sails, and I'm expecting the wind to do anything it wants as I get round the island. You normally get a little bit of a lull, obviously, if the wind's coming from the other side of it. But then it should pick up as soon as it gets to the other side. And maybe I'll get seven knots, you never know. She's a grand island as Puffin Island. Tiny on the chart, but quite big in reality when you get to it. She rises up out the water as if just to make her presence felt. Well, I'm going fast enough that my long arrow there in front turns round and says, I'm going to make Puffin Island to the Conway Fairway boy in 30 minutes. And I think that's quite a scream. I wonder whatever happened to that other boat. Well, he's there, just about to overhaul me by the looks of things. So I'll let me last little bit of sail out and see if I can stem him off at all. But Swallow's not very good at holding other boats off. But we give her a go, if nothing else. She certainly hasn't got the power that she had earlier on. It looks like we've been caught up. Well, I think Swallow's trying really hard now to use what little wind we've got and just try and stay ahead. Every little effort's put in here, isn't it? The bow just kicking water out the way while she tramples along on the sea. I think for a heavy displacement motor sailor, Swallow does stick in a fair performance. She always gives me a, a good feeling. Don't forget, we were near Puffin Island and now we're near Conway Hills. And there's Puffin Island. And we still haven't been passed. So she's doing quite well. She's just holding that big boat off. Just about holding it. But it's definitely getting closer to us. And it's definitely going to pass us. But it wasn't easy. Well, I think she's definitely a beam of us now. And she's cutting water nicely. And I think her transom's almost getting level with my transom now. And I think I can see the back of that boat. And very nice she did too. She's just banged a foresail away. And I think he's just about to get the mainsail down. Me on the other hand, 
A quick pull on my failing line for the main and away it goes. And I wind most of my Genoa up and just leave half of it out. I can gingerly sail back in now. I don't want to go too quickly because there's still not a lot of water below the keel when we get round to a certain point. So if I'm going to run aground, I'm not going to do it at full steam ahead. Well, as it happens, I've got a little over two and a half metres of water, so we're not going to panic about that. Still and all, I need to keep my eye on the ball, because that's definitely sand, that golden stuff. And we don't want to be running up that, do we? Just spotted that little red fishing boat out there, trying to find his way over the sandbanks. I don't think he's going to make it for at least an hour. Well, that's the inner perch can, and as you can see, there's plenty of tide on it, and this marks the entrance into the river. So we're going down the river now, with a little bit of current with us. So we'll be going pretty fast. You can tell it were a dull day for most of the day, because the beaches are actually fairly empty. There's not many people on them sitting down. No, to the other side. Yet there's plenty of sunshine on it now at the end of the day. You can see the Beacons Jetty slope there just disappearing under the water. I think it's a way for service. Oh well, not far to go for me more than now. So thanks very much for coming for a bank holiday beat with us. It's been good having you along. And here's me more and here's me dinghy waiting for me. So until next time, you know what I'm going to say. Bon voyage, everyone.